Hey everyone, welcome to Brave Souls. So my guest tonight, she is a wife, a mom, a social entrepreneur, a anti-trafficking activist for the love storm, a connector, and the founder of Badass Do Gooders. She's also one of my closest friends, and I can't wait for her to come on and share all about her. Um, my guest is Zeke Smith, and as soon as she requests to join in, we will get started shortly. Hi, welcome. Welcome, welcome, Lisa. Hi, Sarah. Zeke is on. waiting for her to request and we'll get started and there she is. I'm going to pull her in right now. Hi Korean Adopted, hello. Going live second. Connection is a bit long. Can you hear me? I can hear, hear you kind of. Um, is hold your on a second. Or yeah, let me fix my Wi Fi real quick because I think I'm on a different Wi Fi. Hang on tight. Okay. Okay. Hi, everyone. Hi, Mary. Hi, Mary. Hi, Francesca. Hey, girl. We were just having some connection issues. But we'll get started very shortly. Hey, Crystal. Hello. I think Zeke's going to come right back on and request. How's everyone doing today? Okay, Seek is back and I'm going to pull her back in. Let's try this again. Hey. <laughs> Sorry oh, about no. that. No, 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 no. I'm in a hotel, and so I forgot that I was lo I was um, connected to my husband's iPhone Wi-Fi, oh. and he took off to go work downstairs, and uh, so I had to reconnect to the hotel's Wi-Fi. So, anyways, okay. that was the weird. <laughs> How are you, girl? Don't worry. Oh, oh, Crystal's like I just got to my hotel room. I know she was saying there was a lot of turbulence on the plane. I would have been like, yeah, I would have died. Oh, hi, Crystal. We have Crystal. We have Francesca. I know. I was just texting with her. Hi, Francesca. We have you. Hi, everybody. On. Yeah. Well, I'm so excited to finally be here because hi. we've been trying for five months to lock yeah, this date down. And we had dates every time, and we just kept canceling on each other. I know. I know. I think it was like right, right, right after Thanksgiving or something. We started to try and pin a date down, and it kept changing, well, and it kept. Said it'll happen. It'll happen. So yeah, no, this is a good time. This is perfect. Good, good. Everything's divine timing, right? Exactly. It's all about timing. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to give it like another minute, just um, see if, you know, more people come on and then we'll get started. Yeah, sounds good. Okay. So How are you, by the way? I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. I'm bouncing back slowly. <laughs> oh, yeah, because you were in Utah with Desi. Yeah, I'm in recovery mode right now. I, I feel I'm you. Just, Let's just say I'm not 21 anymore. Got it. <laughs> my body was just like, no, 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 no. This. Calm down. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, so I'm definitely recovering. And today's a little off, but I'm feeling a lot better tonight. So. Oh. Yeah. Well, it's good to see you. I see your face, at least. I mean, I know we're in touch on as 
as regular as possible. I'm, I'm excited to to have this conversation with you. Me too. She's yeah. wilding out. Crystal, I FaceTimed <laughs> Crystal last night when I was in bed, and she just saw white sheets. She's like, are you in the hospital? <laughs> I was like, no, but I'm very close to me. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> yeah, I hurt myself too much. Um, yeah. Hey, Jim. Welcome. Hi, Jim. I follow Jim on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Good. He's, he's amazing. I love Jim. Yeah, I, I loved the, the interview you did with him. It was really incredible. Pretty, pretty great and very inspiring life Jim story. Jim has been such a great supporter. He's always been. I just love his story. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm supposed to have him back on for part two because there was so much more I could feel that he wanted to share and I wanted to hear. So I have yeah. to schedule that, Jim. Um, so I know you have another live in about an hour so we'll start yeah we're um we are starting our um ig live series so it's twice a week tuesdays and thursdays and we're going to feature as many badass do-gooders as we can feature nice. and i'm excited for you know, that yeah so people can meet and learn to know about some of our members and all the good they're doing out in the world yes, yeah for sure okay well for anyone who joins in late or isn't able to join tonight um the live will be saved after to watch anytime um, thank you all for being here. See, thank you so much. And you know, it's funny, I, I'm now I'm, I'm enunciating your name because Desi <laughs> called me out and kept saying that I call you Zeke. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and it's just my accent, I guess. And I'm like, I'm going to call her Zeke. So I'm like, <laughs> I'm like Zeke. That's okay. <laughs> I've had Zeke. I've had Sack. I've had, it's been pronounced every which way. Oh, <laughs> it's no, okay. I won't call you Sack. <laughs> hey, Chris, welcome. So welcome, uh, Seek. She is amazing. I just gave her a little intro, but I'll do it again since you're here. Um, so yeah, she is a, a mom, a wife, um, oh gosh, a uh, social entrepreneur, a anti-trafficking activist for the Love Storm, a connector, and a founder of Badass Jupiters. And if I left anything out, you let me know. Oh, you're good. Okay. That's perfect. <laughs> um, so I would love to just start into your just growing up. Just talk about mm -hmm. you, your childhood, your family, and we could talk a little bit about the um, Cambodian genocide, and then we'll go from there. Yeah. Well, yeah, we'll start with that. And, you know, April is Cambodian Genocide Awareness Month. So I decided with my IG stories to, to talk a little bit about that. So if anybody's interested, you can go check out my stories on that. I just give a little bit of details about that. But, yeah, my dad is from Cambodia. Um, in the 1970s, um, he escaped the Cambodian genocide. There was um, a communist takeover by the Khmer Rouge. And um, his story is particularly very inspiring because he's, I love, there's so much about my dad that I've learned over the years and more so as an adult started to understand his life story a little bit better. Um, but growing up um, with him and, and his background, I, I remember my childhood being, um, we were poor. You know, we were a refugee family, you know, from Cambodia. Um, but I'll go back to, to his escape is that he, um, he was a, he's a musician. He still is. He's a drummer. And then he also served in the army fighting against the Khmer Rouge. So he would have been targeted for execution by the Khmer Rouge, which is what they did to a lot of people there. It was basically a very extreme communist ideology, very similar to Mao Zedong um, in China mm -hmm. with the communist revolution. Um, with the Cultural Revolution and, and, and everything going on there, right. where they were purging the country of any intellectuals, any Western influence, anybody that has anything in their background that indicates that they are um, compromised, right? Mm -hmm. And so, so just so, I mean, you name it, every, they basically wanted to take the country back to a very agrarian society, which is farmers. Mm -hmm. um, so, Basically, a lot of people were pretending to be um, uneducated, pretending to be farmers so that they can survive. So my dad had to hide his identity and, and they, they couldn't find out that he was a soldier or a musician because that would have been it. Um, there, I just recently found out more details of his heroic escape, mm -hmm. uh, which is crazy because I mean, I'm 43 years old and I'm just now learning my dad's story. Um, because I've just been on this journey of rediscovering, I've been on this journey to reconnect with my roots for a while now, but I've been so afraid to ask him because going through something like a genocide or going through something where you have to flee your country of war and, and death and despair, it's a very traumatic thing for many people. 
And um, I didn't want to re to open old wounds or to have him relive that trauma. So I was always very um, careful and, and afraid to ask him of the details because I didn't know what it would trigger or how he would respond to it. Right. And so we just celebrated our Cambodian New Year's on April 13th. And so I went over there to talk to, you know, to see my parents. They live in, locally in Los Angeles with um, not too far from where I live. Mm -hmm. And I had this conversation with him and started getting more details. It was the most incredible conversation I ever had with my dad. He was so gleeful, actually, and very excited to share his story with me, which threw me back because here I was for 43, you know, for so many years of my adult life, afraid to ask him. Yeah. And it turned out he was very much interested in sharing his story. And it, it's, I mean, the only way I can put it is my dad was like the Harriet Tubman. Um, at that time, he was actually in his escape, also rescuing people and helping people escape. Mm -hmm. Um, that part of his story I didn't know, and so that is really what has been so profound about the discovery and the details to his story. And so from that, I'm actually aggressively on a mission to work on a movie to share his story. I knew for a very long time that I, I knew for a very long time I wanted to tell my dad's story. My husband had always, and every a lot of people have encouraged me. They're like, "You should tell your dad's story. You should tell your dad's story." Mm -hmm. I didn't even know, like, like I said, the details and to learn these details and how incredible it is. I'm, I'm literally at a place where it's like, I have to tell my dad's story. Um, there's such a story of resilience and hope and, and love and, and bravery that, um, that I need to share. So anyway, so I've been busy, busy body <laughs> connecting with people. So I connected with my film director friend in Cambodia, who I know would be amazing at doing at at bringing this film to, to life for me mm -hmm. and he just messaged me back and we're gonna get on a zoom and talk about it I have a bunch of people I mean crystal everyone's been so supportive since I've kind of put the idea out there that I want to work on this film project to really bring the story to life so so that's a little bit of of the genocide background with my dad and for anyone that wants to understand the Cambodian genocide there's so much information out there on my stories I recommended some movies um, mm -hmm. there are really great films already out there that has been made um, but so that, that's the start of my, my um, you know, my childhood coming to, the, to America. I was about three. Um, like a lot of immigrant refugee families, we were kind of thrust into the inner cities of a lot of, um, in, you know, throughout America. So in my case, we were in Los Angeles. And um, we grew up poor. My mom and dad, to this day, don't speak much English. Um, they were not the success immigrant stories that you hear about. They were the other side of it. And so we were, I grew up on welfare, grew up on food stamps, you know, public assistance, um, grew up in the projects. My whole entire childhood was, I was growing up in the projects outside of LA. So this was in the 90s, you know, late 80s, early 90s, um, during the height of the gang war um, in Los Angeles between like the Bloods and the Crips. Oh. So it was very violent, you know, environment that I grew up in. But something about that, I always knew that I, didn't fit in and <laughs> that I didn't belong. And so I was one of those kids, I, I bust myself out of the area. I filled out a form and sent myself like an hour away on the school bus to go to a different school, which is the best thing I did for myself. My parents luckily trusted me with these very adult decisions. Um, and so I, yeah, I grew up in a very different environment in terms of my school environment, but I would still come home to the same environment. But that experience at 11, 12 years old allowed me to see that other people lived very different from me that my, my few blocks where I grew up in the projects was not the way life, that there was all these other possibilities. And, um, you know, I had friends who were from every background, Jewish, um, you know, Latin, you name it, Filipino, and they very grew diverse. up in, yeah. very diverse. They grew up in these big homes with pools and parents who were entrepreneurs and doctors and lawyers. And so it just opened my eyes to like a whole nother world that I didn't experience growing up. And so that was the start of, I guess I would, I would always tell people that, you know, that experience growing up was like vision boarding in real life, you know? And so I knew that there was all these possibilities. So I always had big dreams growing up. I always wanted to like live in a big house. And I remember when my husband and I first started dating, we would drive through Hancock Park, which is like a really ritzy part of LA with all the big mansions. And we'd always look at it and go, oh, that's gonna be our home one day, you know? <laughs> um, so anyways, but that was my upbringing, you know, um, for the most part, but I grew up with parents who um, didn't really understand 
what it meant to live in, in America, but they did their best. And what I, when I think back to my childhood, my parents were very, um, very trusting of me, allowed me to make decisions for myself at an early age, so that allowed me to trust myself. Um, so those are the things I remember very much about my childhood, that my parents were, were um, loving and trusting in the best way that they know how, and, yeah. and that really shaped me. You are very um, just head dri or like um, heart driven. You are very motivated, ambitious, and I love that about you. And that's what led you to your purpose in life. Yeah, yeah. I mean, through throughout my adult life, I you know, and I, I mean, badass. To, I was I can start with badass do gooders too. And the reason why why I can is because I realized badass do good is like a culmination of all my life. It isn't something that I just came up with like recently or anything like that. It looks that way, um, but really it is. And, and I was telling, I was um, onboarding a new member today for Bad After Gooders. And I said, you know, remember when your, my mom would tell me like, be careful who you're friends with. Why well, I, I took that to heart. <laughs> I really did. I mean, my entire adult life, I had always chosen and intentionally picked friends that were very, that could inspire me, that I looked up to, um, that were doing amazing things. And so very early on, I always watched people around me who were very philanthropic, very giving, very um, charitable, people who were in business um, doing incredible things. And that's, and usually, you know, they always say, who are the five people you hang around with the most? Um, and so I was very lucky in that sense that I always knew to surround myself with um, really good people. Yeah. And that turned into many um, years of friendships. And that's kind of how Badass Do Gooders came to be. I, I ended up reaching out to everybody who I've built relationships with, who I'm friends with, who I've worked with in the past. And, and that's how it all came to be, you know. So you also are, an, like I said, an anti-trafficking activist for the Love Storm. Mm -hmm. How did that come about? That is a great story. Um, so everything kind of overlaps a little bit. I was, we were just doing these um, speaker series um, where we were featuring, you know, at the time, badass sugaters, you know, who were doing good, but also, you know, in, in their business and stuff. And so we had this panel called Badass Who Gooders in Entertainment. So I reached out to Cassie, who I've been friends with for eight years now. Um, and I reached out to Anna Lynn McCord, who is also another friend. Um, and they were on the panel. And at the time, um, Anna, Anna Lynn calls me and we end up on this long conversation. And she tells me about this vision and this idea that she has. She's been fighting trafficking for almost 12 years now. Um, she's the president of um, Together One Heart. Mm -hmm. And I had gotten into that cause um, almost 12 years ago as well. When I first stumbled upon this thing called human trafficking, I had never, ever heard of the term. I had never, um, I didn't even realize that that was even a thing. Um, what was happening was I was driving home and I was listening to talk radio. And this really um, horrific case um, was going through trial and it was a sentencing phase. So I was listening to the details of the of the case and I'll, I'll give the gist of it. it was basically a nine-year-old girl that was sold by her 15 year old stepsister for 15 dollars to seven men and first time i had ever heard of anything like that and th this was like 2009 i believe which was before i even was pregnant with my daughter who's now 10 and that case shook me to the core i was my heart broke into a million pieces. I didn't even know that someone could do that to another person or anybody could hurt a child like in that way. Yeah. And I was crying and bawling. I walked into my um, dining room and my husband who was sitting in the dining room was of course startled and, and worried about why I was crying. And I calmed him right away. And I said, and I explained what, what I heard on the radio. And I remember saying to him, I'm like, I can't, unhear this and I can't unfeel this. I have to do something. And so I go down a rabbit hole. I start Googling and researching about this thing called human trafficking and people being sold for sex, children specifically being sold for sex. And I stumbled upon this amazing woman named Somali Mom who um, was rescuing girls from trafficking and she had her shelters in Cambodia. 
anyways, I reached out to her organization and I ended up, um, long story short, doing fundraisers for them. And I became their LA ambassador. And that's where I met Anna Lynn was one of our fundraisers in Beverly Hills. She was an up and coming actress. And at the time, there was a bunch of um, up and coming actresses, um, Jane Mitchell, um, Ashley Ricards, um, Anna Lynn. And um, I just stayed in touch with her over time. And then when, when I asked her to be on the panel, she tells me about this vision she has for this mass meditation to bring awareness to trafficking, but also to find a different way to approach um, human trafficking. And it was through mass meditation because that has helped her with her healing from her personal story, she's been very public about it, um, you know, and even more so recently. Right. And I heard, I saw. yeah, and when when she brought up the idea, I was like, oh my god, I have to, of course, let's make that happen. Like, I, I want to help you bring that to life. And we got together and and created the Love Storm um, based on her idea and her vision. And we launched it last year, January twentieth, um, in front of LA City Hall. Um, and then we were set to do this 20 city mass meditation tour all over the world. And we were going to go, you know, to many cities in, in the United States and then do a, a leg in Europe. We were going to go to Switzerland and Rome. And um, we got invited to have a booth at Cannes Film Festival and all this stuff was happening. And then we did our second stop in New York um, right before the COVID shutdowns. And so, of course, needless to say, there was no Love Storm tour. It halted because of the shutdown and the pandemic. Um, but it is one of the proudest um, campaigns that I've ever been a part of. Where actually this Saturday, um, she is doing an online um, meditation for the Love Storm. So, um, yeah, so I'll make sure I get that link to everybody so that we can join her for that. Um, but that's, yeah, I mean, our goal is to fight slavery from the inside out. You know, there's the mental slavery that we all um, at one point or another and still struggle with, you know, where we have limiting beliefs, you know, and if, and so we need to rescue ourselves first before we think about rescuing others in the physical world of being enslaved. So that's really the concept behind it is to love yourself and rescue yourself first um, so that you can give more and do more for all those little unfortunate people who are out there in bondage, you know, in this horrific trade of, of human trafficking and sex trafficking. So that's the love storm and you, everyone can check it out at, you know, the love and sign up and get involved. And also on Instagram as well. So yep. at the love storm. Yep. You can go follow. Yeah. Oh my gosh, you're incredible. I do want to just read out uh, Van. Oh, Van's on here. You two mm -hmm. are absolutely beautiful and amazing. Oh, thank you. So mm -hmm. are you. Um, mm -hmm. Journey of my Trace Soul, her name is Bethany. She's one of my, my good friends. She just said, um, such a good mission that you're doing and you're proud oh, of. And, thank you so um, much. Yeah, so uh, Jim said, awesome thing. Yes. Um, so share a little bit about Badass Do Gooders. Yes, the Badass Do Gooders. Interesting enough, my husband has tried to correct me to not say that it was an accident because the universe and God you know, everything is meant for you. And so I realize now that Badass Do Gooders is totally meant for me because I would always start the story. It was like, well, it's kind of an accident. And it, it really wasn't. Um, I was with uh, my friend Cassie, who uh, maybe some of you on here know, she's the vice president of Boot to Bullying. So I was at her apartment. Yeah, I was at her apartment. She and I um, got together to launch a previous campaign called Unleash, which is an anti-bullying photo campaign. Yeah, photo campaign that I, so we could start there because that kind of leads into it. But yeah, so Unleash, um, prior to that, um, we launched a photo campaign, which basically is about shedding your, un, your limiting beliefs as well. But it was done through writing words on your back, both positive and negative labels that you have that. been, yeah, that have impacted you. And so we launched this with like a bunch, like 40 friends and, 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 and supporters and family, um, and the concept was that we would we would take the words, you would come up with your words, your limiting beliefs, your labels. We'd write it on your back. I would draw out the stories. I would, I did this like a little private session, usually about 30 minutes with somebody. And I would talk to them about the words that they chose, why they chose it, the story behind it. Um, and over time we did, gosh, we, I think I did the campaign with maybe 300 people over time um but when we launched it it was really cool because it it's it was these black and white photos so they were very jarring they were topless mm -hmm. um very tastefully done where you're covered you know there's yeah. this 
if you go to the page, you know, you're covered. Um, I always call it like hugging yourself. Yeah, I saw. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's like loving yourself. So I always tell people to like hug and love yourself. And um, it just kind of took, took off. I mean, I started getting messages from all over. Initially, I got a message from somebody in Paris, France, who loved our campaign and said, how can I be a part of this? And I was like, well, I didn't think about that, but yeah, I can send you the materials. So I sent her the tattoos and the markers and gave her instructions on how we facilitated the photo shoots and mm -hmm. the questions that I would ask. And so she brought together a group of 25 people in Paris um, and they were the body positive group. And so they did the photo shoot for us. And then it gave me the idea, well, what if, I'm sure somebody else wants it. So we did this poll on Instagram and asked everybody, um, would you like to bring this to your city? And we got a bunch of responses. So we ended up going to almost 20 different cities with this tour. We did New York and we did Salt Lake City, which is how I met Desi. So a lot of the badass do-gooders actually came through this Unleashed Photo campaign. Um, and when, when we launched it, I asked Cassie, hey, would you like to partner with your organization, like to partner mm -hmm. um, so that we can bring more attention to cyberbullying, we can bring more attention to, to the issue. Right. And they said yes. The, they went to the board, and the board agreed a couple days later. Um, but from that, my friendship grew with, with Cassie. So I was at her apartment. This was like summer of 2019. And... Um, I just remember like pouring love on her and, and acknowledging her for all the wonderful things that she does and who she is. And I'm like, you know, you're an actress, you're a singer, you're a dancer, you're a model, you're a vice president of Boot to Bullying. At the time she was working on, a, a, I think a documentary or, so, or something around gun violence. Um, she would jump out of airplanes to raise money for trafficking. I mean, you name it, Cassie's done it all. And I remember saying to her, I was like, you know, you're so, you're, you're so incredible and your heart is so big. Like you're like a badass to gooder and kind of like vomit this term yeah. and she stops in her tracks and she looks at me and she goes oh my god I love that and it just resonated with her something about that really spoke to her and then I remember like brushing it off and going oh I'm sure I didn't come up with that like I heard that from somebody else right. so I left it at that and um she loved it I end up driving home I get a notification on my Instagram from her she had hashtag badass do gooders and tagged me in her bio and I was like, wow, she really likes this thing. And um, still didn't think anything about it. Um, two months go by, and Badass Be Gooders didn't even, um, you know, I, I just kind of put it in the back of my mind. But two months go by, I wake up one morning and it just like hit me like a ton of bricks, like almost like getting a download. And I go, what if it's not a thing yet? Like I should at least look into it. So I did, I Googled it and searched all the social media and it was all there. So I grabbed it all on YouTube and Instagram and Facebook. Yeah, and I was like, oh, it's not a thing. Why did I think it was a thing? Um, and I did, and I sat on it for a few more months, and then like January of 2020, right before COVID, um, started to come up with the concept. I kept thinking to myself, like, you know what? I'm surrounded by real-life superheroes. I'm surrounded by people who have gone through some of the most horrific childhood experiences or the most horrific tra traumatic experience as child, as children, as adults. But on the flip side of it, all these people that I know have turned their pain into purpose, and now they're in service to others, and they're being the light, and they're being um, superheroes, right? Yes. And so then I started to wrap the whole Badass Do Gooders idea around a superhero league. And, I, and the reason for that, too, is like, how can I inspire a younger generation to do more good? They're superheroes. Um, and, yeah, and so the concept really started to come together, and then I started reaching out to everybody, started reaching out to friends that I've known for 20 years, people that I've met recently and all in between. And I said, hey, I've got this concept to bring together a real life superhero league. It's called Badass Do Gooders. And everyone was like, yes, yes, yes. And so um, throughout, you know, the shutdown, I was just on Zooms and calling people. And then um, we were going to launch in June, um, early June, but then the riots and all of the civil unrest was taking place. I'm like, well, this is not a good time. No one Right. You know, there's so much going on in the world and in our country. Like the last thing people are wanting to want to hear is this thing called badass to go. So put a halt on it. Then we ended up re um, pivoting and launching October 20th um, with 100 founding members, yeah. and um, including you. <laughs> yeah, and it was crazy because someone had said to me, "They're like, you know, 100 people that's doing good." <laughs> I'm like. 
Well, actually, I do. I'm really proud of that. Um, I am. I'm really proud of, of the people that I have chosen and, and gotten to know and, and the people who have inspired me, which is how this whole thing came together. And um, so that's really, that's really badass to gooders. And it's, um, it's an invite community um, because I really want to make sure that people's hearts are in the right place that come into this community that they really are about helping and they don't serving just others. Join to join, you know? No, no, it's their life's work. It's yeah. their life mission to. Um, I always say, like, if I wasn't, I can't imagine doing anything else. I mean, the my my fight against trafficking is going to be a lifelong fight. It, I will do that till the day I die. There's not one moment of my day that I don't think about the children that are in bondage that are being well, I mean, abused. That never ends. I mean, that's always yeah. an ongoing issue. Exactly. Yeah. And so it's an invited nomination community. And so some of our members are starting to nominate new members. Um, they know the people in their life that are doing amazing, incredible things. And yeah, it's been so beautiful to meet even more do-gooders and more badasses. And I know every you know, time I go on and I see your story, I just see a new member. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I just onboarded a new one today, and she's incredible, and uh, yeah, literally every day I'm either interviewing somebody or get, uh, someone's introducing me to somebody else, so it's, it's I, I feel so privileged, you know. You beautiful people on, too, like, like, it really has, like, I've met a lot of incredible people through you, mm -hmm. um, many are on here now that just joined, yeah. just hey, Alexa. Just joined uh, Alexa just joined, um, I mean, there's just so many amazing people that, like, you connect with, and you just instantly become, like, family and friends, mm -hmm. and um, it's like a bond that is just yeah. so beautiful. Yeah, I always warn new members, like, by the way, you're going to walk into, like, an instant family <laughs> that you didn't have before. It really is. I, I've been part of different groups, and I've gone to different networking events, and I always felt something missing. So that was part of me creating Badass Do Gooders. I would go... I remember I was going to this one event where they were focused on social entrepreneurs and people doing good with their business, mm -hmm. but it just, something wasn't there. And I kept telling myself like something's missing. And I was like, that's when it, I just was like, I'm going to create it. Um, cause I can't find it where, where I was looking. There's Debbie. Um, yeah. And so it's, the journey has been incredible. I literally, I'm not exaggerating. I wish people could, live this magical life that I live. I wake up incredibly grateful for all the people that I get to be surrounded by, to be inspired by everyday people who are doing incredible work. Like for our IG Live, our first IG Live is today in, in a little bit at five o'clock and it's with Tim and Tim, I mean, Tim is one of those people who just quietly is doing good. I mean, and, and interestingly enough, I got a text from him and he goes, no one's ever interviewed me for anything. And, and I'm like, wow, you know, like I, I want to create a platform that celebrates and recognizes people doing good. You know, I want to create a platform that, that people can be seen, um, people can be, um, be embraced for everything that they are. The one thing that Cassie says to me, um, she was struggling a lot with all the different parts of her. You know, she's a dancer, she's a singer, she's a model, she's all these things. Um, but she always felt like she had to choose in order to be taken seriously. And when Badass Do-Gooders came to be, she looks at me, she goes, Badass Do-Gooders makes my life make sense. I go, because, and, and, so it, right. and it, it's really interesting because you don't have to choose. You can be all, people like to tell you, they're like, well, focus on one thing, right? I get that advice all the time, especially in, in being an entrepreneur. People are always telling me, Seek, why don't you focus on one thing? You're never going to be successful if you don't focus on one thing. I'm a multi-passionate person. There is no way for me to choose to do one thing. Yeah. You know, I love music. Music inspires me in the most incredible way, which is why Badass Do Gooders is built on a musical platform. Um, because I think through art, music, and film, um, those are the most powerful ways we have to bring about messages of change. And when we utilize those things, all of us are inspired in different ways, right? Mm -hmm. Music inspires us. We watch a movie or a film or a documentary and it inspires us. So I really want to utilize that as a way to build campaigns, as a way to bring awareness to certain issues that, you know, we each care about. Um, so that's why we're built on these platforms as well as like, you know, we're doing these once a year festival, but also having an award show. And the reason for the award show is I want to create a platform where we are celebrating people, who, everyday people who are doing good. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's 
there's MTV awards, there's awards for everything. There's awards for web, there's the Webby awards for websites. So I really wanted to create something where we're celebrating people doing good. And that's the reason for why the platform exists the way it does. Wanting to support our members. We have members with, from every background, business owners, entrepreneurs, actors, actresses, musicians, artists, people authors. People all over, just every yeah. kind of person out there with different personalities and missions. Mm -hmm. Just them all together. Yeah, and then, it, you know, and it, it's bringing everyone together to continue to be inspired, you know, because you need that. You need a community that understands you, yeah. that understands that you, sh you can be multi-passionate, that you don't have to stick to one thing. You can be part of a community that says you can be a serious actress, but you can also, you know, do sexy video dances, yeah, exactly. you know. You, can, you, you know, you don't need permission. Um, I think a lot of times we are put into a cage and we are limited by the people around us with all good intentions. You know, a lot of times people who love us and care about us want to protect us. Right. And, and a lot of times, unfortunately, they protect us by projecting their limiting beliefs. Yeah. So it's nothing intentional and nothing to hurt us, but at the same time, too, that really doesn't allow people to be who they're meant to be and to live their authentic self. You know, for me, the most important thing that for my husband and I, we really have the philosophy in our marriage and our relationship to allow each other to be free to be themselves. Right, whatever that looks like and whatever that means. And we do that with our kids, you know. We want to create an environment where our kids are free to be who they are, mm -hmm. you know, that we don't put these parameters or these expectations on them as they should do this or they should get a degree in this field or they should do anything in particular because that's they need to discover that for themselves. Um, so Badass Beginners is all of that wrapped into one. And um, it really is an incredible community. Like, I, I'm... I'm so lucky and so blessed to do not only be the creator of it, but I get to participate and be part of all of this too, because it speaks to me, mm -hmm. you know, it speaks to who I am that, you know, my love for music and my love for being around creative people. I'm not a creative. I'm, my kids are all musicians. <laughs> I don't sing a lick. I, I, you know, I, I don't play any instruments, um, but I, love music I mean my dad is a big inspiration in that area I grew up with music in the background all the time um, so that's one way I want to bring messages of change you know is through is through all of these um, artistic platforms and supporting all of our artists members you know everything you just said wow I love it all um, even people were saying like um, some of our badass debaters on here um, Crystal said you are the missing piece Oh, thanks, Chris. I love you. So sweet. Um, Alexa, so glad you created this community. Um, it sounds like LA taught you to hustle and you learned it so well. You sound so inspired while you're inspiring others and you sound so grounded. Um, I love all of what you're saying. So true. Oh, thanks. And a lot of love. Yeah, I mean, I think at, this, at the same time, it's like, I think we all... And especially, I think, after this past year, you know, um, of, of being in the shutdown, there is this eagerness to connect in a very deep way, right? Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of people are asking very serious questions of themselves, you know, am I happy? You know, am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing? And I think the more you ask yourself those questions and in search of your soul's mission is what I always call it, like Badass to Gooders is a community that embraces you and your soul's mission. Um, and how we, how can we support that, you know? Um, yeah. And so I think once you start to discover that about yourself, um, there's no going back, right? It's one of those things where you like, you can't unsee it. Um, and which is a lot of our members, you know, once you get on that journey to heal yourself and to love yourself and then to, you know, to live in your purpose and to be in service, um, there's just no other way to live. You know, I'm a mm -hmm. true believer of like, you know, things find you and people find you at the time you need it the most. Mm -hmm. And I'm not lying when I say this is badass doers found me at yeah. the right time of my life. Aww. And I just, you know, growing up, I always felt like I was just wasn't enough and I didn't fit in anywhere part of because I was adopted and all too. But, you know, I always belonged to my family. That wasn't the problem, but I just never felt like I belonged here. In this mm -hmm. world. And I didn't know what I was here for. And just meeting you and meeting all the amazing people that I met through here just helped fill my purpose in life. It made me see so much clearer. And I just like everyone, like I said, I've made a post about this recently, but has like shaped me, like individually has shaped wow. me in a different way about myself. Like 
I was one to like not really love myself. I just really self bullied myself. I was very hard on myself growing up. Even mm -hmm. I still am at times. Yeah, but, um, we are all to some degree. Yeah, it has just really made me like build my self confidence and made me really like accept myself more and love myself and just I'm just forever grateful for this whole community and like I said, you guys bad G for life. <laughs> Uh, I know I we're starting you for not dating me. Thank you. No, I mean I saw something really unique in you when we connected. You know, I can f I I'm an energy person and even though we have not met in person ever, you know, everything's been done through FaceTime and Instagram and you know, phone calls and Zooms is that I can feel your energy and I know your heart is is in the right place. Why you're doing it it shines through constantly. Like there is no pretending with you, right? You are who you are. And it's a really warm feeling talking to you um, just from your experience and just why you're doing what you're doing, you know, bringing so much. And we need people who is very passionate in the areas that they're passionate about. And a lot of times it's from your own life experience. You know, you have, you have, gone on this journey because of your own life experience through adoption and wanting to bring more awareness to that issue that adoption isn't this one dimensional thing that people think of adoption and, and I've learned so much from you and just jumping on your lives and and seeing you talk to other adoptees and then you know and then I was able to connect you with other adoptees within the badass do gooder community which is pretty crazy too it's like we have you know I, I connected you with Allie and you guys are like sisters now oh my gosh, she is my adoptee sister I love her I, I mean, I love, and that really brings my heart so much joy. It's so funny. Um, some, some people go, you know, most people don't like to share their friends like that. You know, they're very protective, and they like to hoard their friends. Yeah. I'm like, that's the last thing I wanted. I'm like, for me, it's like I have all these incredible friends, and I want all my other friends to meet each other, you know. Exactly. And so, really, that's what Badass Sugar started off as. It was like, I have all these amazing friends. You guys need to meet each other. And um, so, for me, it's not about, oh, I'm afraid to let somebody go and, and meet somebody else and connect to somebody else. That's actually what brings me joy. Yeah. It's seeing people connect in that way, you know, in, in a way that, and then I get to be that connector, you know, and that makes me happy. And, and I think I'm, that's something I, you know, I am like you in a way because I love connecting too. And I've like connected a lot of adoptees, like within the adoption community. Mm -hmm. I've quite, uh, connected a lot of adoptees together, which I yeah. love. I love saying like, oh, I heard your story. I know someone else who has like can resonate a little bit with you. Why don't mm -hmm. you reach out to them or I'll start a message between you two or, and I love it. And I find out that they're following each other. They're coming on yeah. the post and then they're talking on the phone. And I'm like, I just, like you said, it brings you such joy. It does. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It does. I mean, and that's, and I, and I get to experience that on a daily basis, on a daily basis. Cause people tag me when they're together. They tag me when they're like, I'll have you lunch or yeah. they'll tag me like, look who I'm meeting up with. And you know, and it's, it's, it's so unique in our community that there's just this like built in trust, you know, that when you meet another badass or gooder, you know, that person is a good person. And um, so it's like we pre-vetted everybody for everybody <laughs> in a way, you know, and so it's really cool to see that. I am um, I'm in awe, honestly, when I, um, when I get to witness that and I get to see friendships blossom. It's really cool Absolutely. to have front row seats to that. Absolutely. Um, oh, thank you, Michelle's beautiful soul. Yes, mm -hmm. Michelle's an angel. Stop. You're making me blush. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, so what was, I'm going to ask you one last thing. I didn't really have this question prepared, but I guess just based on what we talked about, what advice would you give the younger generation to, like, what, you know, um, yeah, I didn't have this question prepared at all. Yeah, no, it's what okay. What advice would you give the younger generation? Yeah, one advice. I mean, I think for me, you know, I, Molly in Florida, who I did her podcast earlier this Molly year. Dare, she, right? Yeah, Molly Hillenbrand. Yeah, Molly Dare. She um, asked me a really point, a question that no one had ever asked me. She goes, who was your inspiration for like for doing good mm -hmm. and I never thought about that per se i mean i'd always been surrounded by, by people doing good but i was like who can i pick just one person and then of course i looked back to my mom you know growing up with a mom who who with very little resources who had four small children she always found a way to support people and show up right and that was the one thing that really resonated with me as I watch her and how she moved and how she how she was being you know with other people she would always 
show up for people in their time of need, especially. I mean, I remember as a young child, and if there was a funeral, my mom would show up three days before to help them get ready for a funeral. She would cook. She would, you know, whatever it was. So even if she didn't have the money, she found time and she found, like, really meaningful ways to show up for people. And so my advice to to young people would be to find that one that one source of inspiration, whoever that may be. It might be a parent. It might be somebody else. Um, and then to emulate the good parts of them, right? And so I took that of my mom and I just kind of multiplied it, <laughs> you know, with everybody that I would come into contact with. For me, it's so important to show up for people. And if I can, and if I'm available, I will be there. <laughs> and I will be there online. I will be there in person. And everyone always asks me, they're just like, how are you in so many places? Um, because those are the things that's important to me. Um, showing up for people and building relationships because at the end of the day, nothing else really matters. It really is about the relationship you have with people. Um, so build those relationships. Show up for people. I love that. Yeah, I, I completely agree with you about just showing up for people with no questions asked. Mm -hmm. you know? No expectations, no questions asked. Yeah. You just, yeah. you know, you know someone that you care about needs help and you need them. You just go. Yeah. Just do it. It. that's just part of being a, a friend and you know someone that you know you care about you want to be them for them so yeah no. and that's what we hope to do you know we hope to inspire a younger generation to live a lifestyle of doing good that doing good is not an afterthought that doing good can be I don't want people to think of doing good as some big grand gesture like me and Annalyn you know a love storm and a big huge campaign it can be one small kind act each day. It can be with a stranger. It could be anything. But those little ripple effects that you have of kindness yeah. throughout your days, I promise you, it multiplies. Yeah. And it comes back at you like a 100 times better. Yeah, what do they say? It costs you nothing to be kind. So yeah. just be yeah. kind to others. Yeah. So that's, that's you know, my life is, is, is um, really bringing people together to do more good in, in a really fun and cool badass way. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, again, you are the badass queen. And I can't wait to see what more unfolds with this community. And I'm sure there's going to be so many more inspiring people that are going to join and just so many incredible things are going to happen in the future for us. So Yeah. Yeah. I mean, people can, you know, obviously – follow our Instagram and just see more, yeah. you know, more things. I mean, it's been kind of a slow rollout just because of COVID. I mean, my husband joked, he goes, you started a social club during a shutdown? And I'm like, yeah, kind of. <laughs> Why not? That's all we but, really had to do. Yeah, but it's interesting enough because people were feeling isolated and then people were feeling like they needed to connect with others. And so Badass to Gooders actually came at a very good time in a, in a time that most people needed a community like this. And now that things are starting to open back up, like, I'm, we're already in the thick of planning. I mean, we have our next retreat that, that is coming up. We have another retreat that I'm already working on for Austin in the fall. And then we're, we're planning our big festival and, and award show for next spring here in Phoenix um, because I'm moving to Phoenix. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'll be back and forth between L.A. and Phoenix, but I am relocating to Phoenix. But I'm excited to bring it here. I mean, Arizona's pretty open, and they're already booking events like crazy and – uh, so we're ready. I think our community is ready for that. Our community is ready to see each other in person and Absolutely, connect in yeah. person. Yeah. So I'm excited to grow it. I'm excited to, to really like find badass do gooders all over the world. Um, we're expanding in different cities. I mean, right now we we have members in about 35 cities, mm -hmm. um, but we're we're looking at every corner of the world for do gooders out there. Nice. I love that. Well, Zeke, thank you so much for coming on with me tonight. Thank you, everyone, for taking the time out to come on and support us through this conversation. Again, go follow um, at The Love Storm and at Badass Do Gooders. And if you know anyone that you want to nominate to uh, just, you know, it's a total badass to do good in the community, send them our way. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate this time, and I, I absolutely adore you and all the good work that you do, all the good that you're putting out in the world. I mean, you embody exactly what it means to be a badass to gooder so I am incredibly grateful to have you in my life, but also, you know, that other people get to experience, you know, what's so wonderful and beautiful about what you do. So, you know, keep doing, keep doing what you're doing, and you're changing lives. Thank you. So, you too. And everyone on here, all the badasses, 
keep doing what you're doing. They're all just incredible people with communities, organizations, and they're just doing good in the world. And just everyone else on here, you're also doing amazing. Um, Thank you. Have a great night. You too. I love you too. Bye.